the European standard EN50342 is the most common standard used. It was last updated in 2015 and supersedes the version from 2006. The reason for this update was for start-stop vehicles and for truck batteries. If you're used to working from cars from Asia, you'll be used to the JIS or the SBA standard. And also vehicles from America, you'll be used to the SAE, so the Society for Automobile Engineers, or the BCI, the Battery Council International. Other countries have their own standards, so it's important to point out that, that Russia and China have their own standard, and the rest of the world that is not covered by these standards have their own standard too. So EN is the important standard for us in Europe. It consists of seven different levels. Part one is general test procedures and processes for our batteries, and part six was introduced in 2015 to cover start-stop batteries. Does anybody have any idea how the CCA that is printed on the label is determined? It is important to understand that the CCA rating in accordance to EN standard is based on a test procedure which is completely different to what a handheld battery tester is doing when testing a battery. The ENCCA test is made of three steps. In step one, the battery is being cooled down to minus 18 degrees for at least 24 hours. So this is what we commit to when printing 680 amps on the label. We make sure that this battery is capable to deliver 680 amps at a temperature of minus 18 degrees C. During the test, we discharge this high current for 10 seconds. Following this, the battery rests for another 10 seconds. After this short resting time, we continue to discharge the battery with a current of 60% of the rated value. In this example, 60% of 680 equals 408 amps. The battery only passes the test once two criteria have been met. After the first 10 seconds, the voltage must be above 7.5 volts. And after the 90 second test, the voltage must be above 6 volts. Have you noticed the wheels that are turning in the left hand corner? This represents the total duration of the cold cranking test. As I'm talking here about the pass criteria, the circles are still moving. Imagine this, a real life scenario. Trying to crank an engine for one and a half minutes in the morning. I guess almost none of you would try to start a car for that long. And again, here we're talking about a battery at a temperature of minus 18 degrees. This is pretty impressive. The usual power socket in your house is normally rated at about 13 amps. These batteries can punch out over 50 times that power. That's just to give you an example of the amount of power that is in one of these boxes. So there we have cold cranking amps as defined by the European standards. It's also important to remember that different batteries have different standards. So when you're changing a battery, it's important to compare the standards and make sure that you fit the right battery. Just as it is when using a handheld battery tester, that you select the right standard for the battery that you are testing, because you are then selecting the correct algorithm to check the battery correctly. Talking about battery testers, considering the test we just discussed with cooling down the battery, testing for one and a half minutes, with a very high current discharge, it becomes obvious that handheld battery testers use a different test method with an internal algorithm that tries to determine the CCA potential of a used battery. A word of advice, do not use a battery tester on a new battery. You will just get a random reading. You will not get the proper performance of the battery. Key takeaways, so CCA or cold cranking amps. That's the amount of power that a battery has that it can give. There is different standards for CCA, so it's important that we test like for like. So we test an EM battery against an EM battery or a JIS battery against a JIS battery. It's also important to remember that our batteries fulfill the full EN standard for cold cranking amps at minus 18 degrees. Because of different standards across the regions, we cannot test, say, a battery that is 680 amp hour with the BCI against a 680 amp hour battery EN. We will just get different results. So it's really important that we test the correct battery against the correct standard. Yeah.